Hello, students. I hope you all are doing well today. Uh, I'm sure you must have been enjoying your vacations a lot. Uh, this is Farhan Pato, and today I'm going to explain you something about the process of writing. Now, uh, <clears throat> how many of you think that writing is for only few people? How many of you think that writing is an inborn quality? There's always this mis misperception in students that they think that in their class, there are certain students, whenever they write, they write good. And no matter uh, how much efforts the rest of the class puts in, they might never be able to write as good as those few students are writing. How many of you think so? Well, this is, uh, this is a really uh, a misperception. Uh, writing is not an inborn quality. Writing is a skill. You know the difference between an inborn quality and a skill? Okay, so uh, an inborn quality is a God-gifted quality, while a skill has a process in it. A skill has, is in, has involved certain steps. So if you know those steps, you can learn that skill. Uh, I give you some examples of skills like, uh, <clears throat> like cooking, like driving, like swimming. So how many of you think that you can learn how to drive or you can learn how to swim or you can learn how to cook? In fact, all of you because it, these all skills involve certain steps. So if you know those uh, steps and rules of driving, everyone can learn how to drive. If you know uh, those rules of uh, swimming and steps, everyone uh, can learn how to swim. Likewise, everyone can learn how to, how to cook. Likewise, writing is also a skill. It has a certain process. So if you know that process, if you know those rules and you follow those rules, every one of you can be a very good writer. Now, uh, <clears throat> now what, is, uh, what are those, uh, uh, those steps or those rules? We must know that. Uh, so when you start writing, uh, what should be the very first thing that you should be doing? Normally what happens when a teacher gives uh, a particular topic and uh, asks you to write an essay or a paragraph, what you normally do, you just pick your pen and you start writing. Whatever comes up in your mind, you keep writing it. And after 10 minutes, you're done with your writing and you give that piece of paper back to your teacher. And you think that, well, our job is done. And now it's the responsibility of the teacher to check it to correct it uh, and you know, uh, at the end of the day, the teacher uh, does all the corrections and when you receive your paper back, it's all red actually, it's all bleeding. And in that process, do you think this is a process? In that process, what have you learned? You never dare to see uh, what mistakes you, uh, you have made because they were checked by the teacher and that they have given you that piece of paper back to you, and you never dare to look uh, look back to uh, look back to that paper, that piece of paper. So this is why most of the students have have got problem with writing. So we need to understand that writing has certain steps. So when you read uh, a good essay uh, in a book uh, that you like the most, do you think that one fine morning? Uh, that writer wakes up on one fine morning and starts writing and then just 20 minutes, uh, the writer is done with that piece of writing. No, it is not It is not so. You never realize how much efforts that writer had put in, uh, in that piece of writing before actually writing the final draft. So today, let's discuss what are those steps uh, in order to write, uh, uh, in, in order to write better, so the writing process starts with pre-writing. 
Now, what is pre-writing? As the word itself suggests, the word pre means before. So pre-writing is actually before writing. So what you should be doing before writing. Uh, <clears throat> in pre-writing, what you do, you try to collect information, you try to collect, you try to generate ideas about the topic that you are going to write about. Now, why should we pre-write? Why should we need pre-writing? Pre there are certain types of pre-writing. There are five basic types of pre-writing techniques. Uh, my fellow man, Sohan, is going to explain those five techniques in detail uh, in, in the coming uh, videos. But so I'm, I'm not going into the depth of that. But why do we need pre-writing? Now, the problem is if you're given a topic and you start writing on a piece of paper and after 15 minutes, you're done with it. The problem is the phrase that I use for this is actually to think on paper. So if you've got a topic and you start writing on, on that topic, what you're doing actually, you're thinking, whatever you're thinking, you're writing on a piece of paper. So what you're doing actually, you're thinking on paper. Now, what is wrong with this? The problem is that our thought process our thoughts are always in the random order. If you just close your eyes for a couple of minutes, uh, there are two organs uh, in our body which starts functioning when uh, we are born and they keep functioning till our death. One of them is heart, the other one is our brain. Even when we are sleeping, our brain and our heart, they both keep functioning. You know, when we have dreams, nightmares and sweet dreams, our brain is still working. So if you just keep quiet for two minutes and you close your eyes, your brain is still working. So after two minutes, if you just open your eyes and somebody asks you, what were you thinking? You would tell about so many different things. So when you when you just close your eyes, you would think about, well, you know, uh, what did I eat in my breakfast today? And then you would think, <laughs> why the teacher has asked us to close our eyes. And then you would think, well, it is uh, Saturday today. So tomorrow is Sunday, it's vacation, it's, uh, tomorrow is a holiday. So what I'm going to do tomorrow. So see, if you just keep writing those thoughts on a piece of paper, and at the end of the day, if you just look at that paper, you'll laugh at the ideas that you put in because there's, there's no connection with those ideas. These ideas are random ideas. There's, there's no connection among them. Uh, they are going to be very unorganized things. So you were, you were thinking about uh, your breakfast and then you start thinking about, about Sunday and then you start thinking about why the teacher has given you that topic. So if you just jot it down on a piece of paper and you just have a look at that, uh, you would be amazed. You would actually start laughing at your ideas these ideas are always in the random order. Why? Because our thought process is always in the random order. We always think in random. Uh, we always think in, we always think randomly. So if uh, you do not have pre-writing uh, for your essay or for your paragraph, whatever you are going to write would be unorganized, would be in random order without any proper sequence. Now that is why we need, uh, we need this first step, we need to have pre-writing. So the basic purpose of this pre-writing uh, is to generate ideas about the topic that we are going to write about. So once you're done with that pre-writing, it, it could be free writing, it could be questioning, it could be clustering, uh, it could be making a list, uh, sketch outline. So what you do actually, you make an outline so when you go to the second step, you already have an outline with you and you know that you're going to write these, these things in your paragraph or an essay. <clears throat> so once you're done with your pre-writing, the second step is writing your first draft. Now, whatever ideas that you have already generated, what you're going to do, you're going to put it on a piece of paper. Uh, you're going to put it on a piece of paper in the form of either an essay or a or a paragraph that depends what you're going to write. And uh, uh, till now you have been focusing on the content, what you are going to write, what, what you'll write first, 
what will you write uh, after that what will you write at the end okay so uh, whatever ideas that you have generated in your first step pre writing in second step you are going to put it on a piece of paper in the form of a paragraph or an essay so do you think you are done with it no you're not done why because you have been focusing on ideas only you've been focusing on content only you've you've never thought about uh, about the language so once you're done with your second step which is writing you know this uh, this draft that you have made this is uh, this is called your first draft or a rough draft so once you're done with this se this second step you have written that uh, uh, that first draft in third step what you're going to do in third step you're going to revise so revising is the third step now what are you going to revise there are two things that you can revise you can revise your content and you can revise your language so when you're revising your content you will see which thing will come first for example if you have written an essay uh, and there are you know three supporting paragraphs uh, say it's a college essay so it has it is 131 essay introduction paragraph and three supporting paragraphs and a concluding paragraphs so you will see in third step in revising well you know uh, this point that i i have put on uh, in, as as a first supporting point well it should come as a second or it should come it, it should be the last one because this is perhaps the best uh, idea you have generated so you're going to revise your content uh, you're also uh, going to revise your language okay so how you're going to revise your language you're going to revise uh, okay you uh, what you will revise in your content as well for example you have written something and you think well well this thing uh, this detail or this supporting idea is not needed so what you will do you will delete it okay you will uh, you will not uh, include it in your final paragraph so you are going to you are you are revising your content once you have revised your content then you will revise uh, your language how you are going to revise your language you will see your sentences you will see the structure of your sentences uh, because when when you were writing this first draft your your focus your all attention was uh, uh, was towards uh, writing that first draft so you were not thinking about about good vocabulary you were not thinking about the structures but once you have put it so now you are going to you are going to revise it you will see you know this sentence well if i write this sentence in that way you know if i use that structure that that might have been better or if you see well i have used this word uh but i think you know here if i use this other word uh so an, an appropriate vocabulary so it might it might look well okay so in third step what you are going to do you are going to revise you are going to revise your content and you are going to revise your language once you are done with it you are only left with one step and that step is your final step which is called editing now what you do in editing actually uh in editing you correct your spellings and your punctuations see you have put in a lot of efforts already into uh, your essay or into your paragraph so do you want uh, to just give it uh, just hand it to your teacher without checking the spelling and uh, spellings and uh, uh, and punctuation so if there are so many spelling mistakes in punctuation at the end of the day the teacher will have a very wrong impression actually uh, so when once you have put in a lot of efforts at at the last point you should check your spellings and your punctuation and once you have edited as well now you are going to have your final draft so see you know how many steps are involved already uh, you'll you'll start with your pre writing and then you'll write your first draft or your rough draft then you are going to revise it you'll revise it and then you will edit it and then you will have your final draft so it has got so many steps so uh quality is never an accident it is always the result of intelligent efforts now some of you might ask me sir you know in exam we don't have that much time so how how could we do these all things now keep in mind <clears throat> uh in exam we have realized that you write you actually overwrite your answers if you are if you are asked to write an answer in just four or five lines 
you actually write uh, 10 lines, 15 lines. So you should be, uh, you should write less, okay? But you, it, it should have some quality, okay? You should spare some time to revise and edit what you have written in your, uh, in your exam as well. But again, you know, here I'm not talking about only ex from examination point of view. Uh, whenever you have time, if you write for a magazine, if you write for, uh, you know, uh, a newspaper, so you need to uh, follow these all steps. Otherwise, if you have just written an essay or a paragraph in 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes without having your outline or without revising it, uh, it's just going to be, you know, uh, a rough draft, a first draft, and you'll never get good marks for that. So you should spare some time to do this all. And the second thing is just yes, first time when you'll do it, since you're not used to it, it'll take a lot of time. But uh, if, you if you are practicing it, if you, you know, uh, if you've got a habit of it, uh, after five or six times attempts, you will see that you'll take less time. It is less time consuming. So for example, if first time, if you're taking, say, you know, uh, 15 minutes in your pre-writing, uh, but if you do it two, three times, you'll come to know that, you know, amongst these five pre-writing techniques, well, this technique, for example, clustering is the simplest one and you'll hardly take three, four minutes. And the good thing is, uh, if you don't have your pre-writing, if you don't have an outline as to start writing, the bad thing is uh, that you'll start writing, you think that, you know, uh, you should not be wasting time in your pre-writing. So you start writing, you'll write two, three paragraphs and then you get stuck. Uh, you want to write more, but you have no idea. So what you do actually, whatever comes up in your mind, whether it is relevant or relevant, you start writing it. And at the end of the day, it's not going to be, uh, you know, a quality paper. So uh, if you practice it, uh, you'll take less time. Uh, but you need to follow at least these three, four steps uh, in order to produce a quality piece of paper, in order to produce a quality, you know, essay or a paragraph. Okay, so that was all about process of writing. <clears throat> I want to tell you one thing more. Uh, uh, whatever you are writing, um, you should always have these two things in your mind. One, uh, what is the purpose of your writing? Second, uh, who is your audience? So whatever you're writing, whether you're writing a book, you're writing an essay, you're writing a story, you're writing a paragraph, whatever it is, keep these two things in your mind. Uh, what is the purpose of writing? So you'll think, you know, what is the purpose of your writing? Do you just want to pass on information or you want to persuade or convince somebody to take some action? Uh, in both cases, whatever things, whatever content you'll write, you'll write it in a different way. Okay, so you should know what is the purpose of your writing. Second, uh, you should always have in your mind, who is the audience? Who are you writing for? Uh, for example, if you're writing a story and you should understand, you should understand, you should know who are you writing this story for? If you're writing this story for say, uh, class uh, 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 students of grade three, and then you're writing the same story for uh, university students, do you think you'll write the same in the same way? No, of course, you know, the way you'll write these two things would be uh, absolutely different because when you're writing for these kids, of grade three, you'll use very simple language. Uh, you'll write very short sentences and you'll not write any philosophical thing or any complex ideas because you know that the audience is just grade three students and they might not understand what you're going to write about. Even the theme of the story would not be the same. For example, you cannot, you cannot write on the theme of love or the theme of marriage for class three students. But if you're writing this, the same story for university students, all of a sudden everything would be changed. Uh, so you will you'll think that, okay, you, you, you can have difficult, a bit difficult language. Uh, you can have uh, uh, some philosophical themes as well. And the way you are going to write would be totally different. So whatever you're writing, you should have these two things in your mind. Uh, what is the purpose of your writing and uh, who is your audience? Okay, so in today's lecture, I have just given you uh, a general idea about the process of writing. These pre-writing techniques, there are five pre-writing techniques. 
uh, you're going to have videos uh, from Ma'am Sohan, uh, and in which she has told you in detail what these techniques are, and she has told you in detail all these techniques separately. Uh, I'm sure uh, you would have enjoyed this lecture. So see you till next lecture. Thank you.